Hello, and thank you for joining me for this demonstration of how to create a user within the 8x8 admin console. As you can see on my screen, I'm currently signed in to my admin console, and I'm just going to select the users option. Now that I've selected the users option, I can see all the users that have been created on the system. If I need to, I can search for a specific user. And then once I found that specific user, I could then edit or do some quick actions against them. We've covered that in a separate video. To create a new user, all I need to do is in the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll see there is a create user option. By selecting this, this will then allow me to start to add the basic information, assign a site to this user and then assign a license to them. I'll just populate the credentials. Normally, you would use your email address as your username, but it needs to be unique. And I already have an account with my email address as my username. So I'm having to create a unique username. When you create the username, it will check to see if that is available. If it isn't, you'll then be prompted. So if I show you an example of that, you'll see it's already in use, so we can't have that username. We then need to select a site. So once we've selected our site, we can then view things like the language and the time zone, they're correct. Company directory scope, I wanna see everyone, so we'll leave that as that is. We can add some additional information which will be available within my contact card on the 8x8 work application, so job title and department. And we can also add a personal contact number which I can also be leveraged um, from within there. Um, the last thing we need to do here then is assign a license. So we're just gonna pick an available license. You will only see licenses that are available within this dropdown. So if you were expecting to assign this user an X4, it means that there are no X4s available if they're not available within this list. So I'm just gonna choose the X series license. Now that I've scrolled down, we can see that 8 bytes recommending an extension number. We can go with that recommendation or we can populate our own. If the number is in use, then you will be told at this point, we can't have that extension number. You will also need to assign a DDI number. So all the available DDIs will be listed within this dropdown. If you can't see any DDIs in there, it means that you don't have any available on the system. So you either need to go and claim a DDI or we got to wait for more numbers to be ported over to 8x8. In most cases, you would claim a number from 8x8. So we're just going to select the number. Now that we've selected our number, we have the option to apply additional DDI numbers to this user. So it might be that I have a UK number, but I also have a um, French number. So if we wanted to apply additional DDIs to a user, we can do that there. Underneath that, we can assign a device type. So if our user is a soft phone only user, then we'll leave that as none. If our user has a desk phone as well, then we need to select the drop down and choose the device type of the phone that the user will have. So I'll go VVX450. Once we've selected our device type, we then have a choice as to whether we give the user an activation code to activate the phone themselves, or whether we manually input the MAC address whilst we're creating the user. Scrolling down further gives us some more options. We can have things like enable call waiting. So if you're already on the phone, you'll get notified of other calls waiting to speak to you. Most of the options from here on will be populated by the basic information field. But to show a few, we have things like voicemail settings. So from here, we could, if we've already got the greetings, we could upload the audio files of external voicemail greetings. We can then choose whether we want a voicemail to email notification. Currently mine's disabled and I'll leave it as that. We can manually set a pin or we can allow the user to create their own pin. External caller ID and internal caller ID, uh, really what names displayed. The external caller ID also choose, shows the number that's displayed when making an outbound call. So we can change this to a main number of the company should we wish to. Um, we can also do that on site permissions. So we could say, you know, everyone that's a member of this site will display this number. So we wouldn't necessarily need to worry about that. The internal caller ID is just the name that's displayed to your colleagues when you call them internally. 
Call forward in rules allows you to make changes to the default rules. So for example, if I don't answer a call within 15 seconds, my call will go to voicemail. I may want to make a change to that to say, well, actually let it ring for 30 seconds before going to voicemail. You can also add rules in as well, should you wish to. Call recording settings allow you to define whether calls are recorded for this user or not, or if they can select to record their own calls. In this case, I'll go never record calls, and we're not going to announce the recording to anyone because we're not recording calls. External calling permission defines as to where we can call. So we either have international, domestic, extension to extension and emergency. So we can toggle between those three. We will retrieve our calling country numbering plan from the site that's been assigned to the user. If you're utilizing fax to email, you'll just need to put your fax number in here and then the recipient email address. So it will just take the user's email address from the basic information. And then from there, we can choose whether we get a notification whenever we retrieve or receive a fax. From here, we can define whether we have access to analytics or not. Because I'm an X2 or we're giving this user an X2 license, we can only access the essential analytics. If they had an X4 license, then they'd be able to access the supervisor analytics, which gives view to more options or more reports. Finally, we have onboarding information. So at this point, when we're creating our user, do we want to send the welcome email to them or not? If we do, we'll leave this toggled on. If our user's not starting for a couple of weeks, we may want to defer that so we could toggle that off, stop the system from sending that welcome email. So once you're happy with your configuration, all you need to do is select save, and that will then go ahead and create our user on the system. Now that the user's created, we can see them from within the users list. So here's our new user on extension 1029. So in this video, we have demonstrated how to create a new user from within the 8x8 admin console. Thank you for watching this demonstration.